uh, starting this um, webinar. So, um, guys, uh, welcome everyone again. Uh, my name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of Latin Startups. I'm going to put this um, presentation in full right now about the programs that uh, we have in Latam Startups and how we are helping international startups to connect and to uh, go uh, you know, international. So I'm not sure if all of you uh, or any of you have heard about before about Latam Startups. Uh, we are a nonprofit corporation. We are an accelerator incubator based in Toronto and we help exclusively international startups to scale and a scale in, from Toronto to international uh, markets. So we have had uh, programs available since 2016 and 2017. We received the first group of startups uh, in, at that time. And since then we have helped over 90 startups in our programs. Uh, so startups come from different uh, type of countries, different type of technologies. Uh, of course, everything is about technology in here, so we are not taking like a inter, um, uh, traditional models. But for example, I wanted to put today uh, here in in this slide some uh, you know comments that we usually receive from our startups partners, uh, volunteers, and people that have uh, entered into the different programs. Uh, the different programs that we have at Latam Startups are programs that are designed depending of the stage of the company and depending of uh, you know uh, how they want to take the market but uh, we try to be consistent with the type of um, uh, programs that we are presenting for for the startups that are coming here so the first program is actually the scala bootcamp program this is a very popular program that we have we have just two calls a year uh, every time that startups come to uh, to our programs to apply for our programs is because they um, the case is usually that they already have some traction in the market and they want to expand business into North America. So the Scala Boot Crime program is basically a market validation program for two weeks and then startups basically are uh, why they are taking this uh, this bootcamp is because they like to save some time and money uh you know it's it's easier to uh, validate and to talk with experts in in different areas and also potential clients during these two weeks and try to validate what they have been their assumptions in regards of uh you know the the type of uh, market that they want to enter and what they want to do in here and then uh we also uh have uh, you know uh, startups that basically during the bootcamp they realize that this is not a time for them to enter to the market, uh, or they realize there are some other potential uh, markets that they can actually target uh, in, in either in the region or other regions in the world. So uh, if it's not timing, they realize that in the two weeks, uh, usually. Um, they get help uh, from people who cares about their business because most of uh, our advisors and um, people that are involved with LATAM startups uh, are, have international backgrounds or they have helped uh, people with international backgrounds. So they really care that uh, you know, your startup will do something uh, better here in this market. If you grow in, in Canada and you grow in Toronto, you are going to be hiring local people, you're going to be paying taxes. So uh, it's in the own interest of the community to bring companies that, that they believe uh, will do uh, very good in the startup ecosystem in here. Um, the ecosystem is extremely supportive uh, for fast tech companies, uh, fast growth tech companies, and uh, they have, we have different type of incubators and accelerators that we work with in order to uh, have a better supportive system for uh, international startups that are coming for the program. Uh, the, the Canadian brand is also very strong. So uh, for international startups that are coming here, uh, they have also the intention to have a corporation in Canada just because uh, you know the brand uh, can help them to sell better sometimes in their own country, so in the, in the region that they are coming from. So how these companies validate business? Uh, this is a very important point, um, uh, you know, you have to recognize that you are entering into a, a new and mature market. Um, sometimes people 
uh, think that Canada is like US, uh, you know, they are entering to something like San Francisco or, or New York. And, and I have to say, it's a very different environment. It's a very different market uh, from San Francisco, New York. Uh, I believe that, you know, the ecosystem in general don't like to be compared with, the, uh, with what is happening in the US. Be, besides that, we work very close with the US, uh, you know, but and it's not quite the same. So part of that is recognizing that perhaps where you're coming from is, is a country that, you know, um, that, that takes very well your product or service, but in here, you will have to specialize and, and, and try to uh, understand better uh, your possibilities in this market. Uh, the other way to validate is uh, researching competitors. We have, uh, you know, we put together uh, volunteers that are going to be working with the companies uh, to research uh, for information about competitors. Um, I have companies that they always say, well, we don't have competitors, but you always have one. Uh, that's important for you to know. And, um, you know, we also analyze that your business model is something that is going to be working in here. Uh, sometimes business models uh, work in, in your country or what you are doing is actually producing money in your country, but it doesn't necessarily uh, to be the case in here. 92% uh, of the startups that pass through the programs actually change business business model. So that's very important just to know that you are not the only one that may be going through that. Uh, but business models tend to be, uh, we try to simplify as much as we can. So, you know, companies can scale up in some other countries once we finish with that. Uh, so also a uh, way to validate is talking with uh, other potential customers people that can help you, uh, you know, to, under, to, to give you a feedback about what you want to bring in here, or if they feel comfortable, you know, paying for what you are proposing right now. So it's very important for you to, uh, to know that uh, at this point, uh, customers, uh, especially in this country, are very open to talk with, you know, uh, with other people and give a feedback at least, you know. It's not that you are going to go to them to, hey, just buy my service or product right now. But, you know, we usually uh, advise companies to go and talk with the customer about how they feel about this service, if it makes sense for them to buy something like this, or if they will do something different with, uh, with the service that, that you're providing or the product that you're providing. And of course, uh, you know, something very important for the companies is to have a legal structure um, that is going to work for, uh, for this market and for many other uh, markets that you want to scale up. Now, um, we don't encourage companies to incorporate in this uh, stage uh, when they are validating uh, assumptions, let's say. Um, we actually encourage them in the second step uh, to, uh, to validate assumptions. And then after they, they have done that process, they, and they are sure that people are going to pay for uh, what they are proposing, then start the legal structure and incorporate uh, the business. Uh, I know this doesn't sound as fast as you may expect, uh, you know, for companies that are entering into the market, but it's the safest way. Uh, you know, we've seen in the past companies that have incorporated and then they realized that the, uh, the structure that they put together was not the, the best structure that, that they could have uh, for, for the company that they're proposing for this market. So uh, many people ask us, you know, when do you think we are ready like, to, to really enter to the market? Um, it's very important that you understand that to enter to this market, you require intellectual property, especially in the programs that we run. Uh, this uh, this comes some uh, some kind of confusion around trademarks and copyrights and things like that. Uh, we have a specific lawyers that can help you, uh, you know, to understand better uh, what is intellectual property, what what we want to see in regards of intellectual property, because I mean, for for technology companies, this is really important, especially for those that are thinking, for example, into applying in the future for a Star Visa program. Uh, that will be a very important uh, aspect uh, for the Sarah Visa program, and it's important for any technology company that is, uh, you know, growing in the market to, to have that part. Uh, you are not putting your uh, company in a financial risk. Uh, this is also important for us, uh, that you have enough funding to bring your company here. 
either is your own funding uh, or you are getting some investors around, which is more unlikely. Uh, like many companies, for example, ask us, can we get an introduction with investors? Yes, we can introduce you with investors, but if you don't have traction in the market, uh, you know, the, uh, um, the outcome may be that you don't get investment. Uh, so it, it, even companies with traction in the market, it's, it's extremely hard to get investment right away. Uh, so we don't recommend this as, a, you know, putting your hopes in that you are going to get investors in the market in order to uh, put your company here. Uh, certainly there are some grants in the market and this is like free money from the government or, uh, you know, from other institutions that are putting, for example, competitions or are putting together some projects uh, where, where startups can actually, uh, uh, you know, apply for. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we have startups that get grants faster than investment, for example. Uh, all your co-founders agree with this step. This is very important. Uh, believe it or not, we have startups that uh, they have co-founders that they don't agree, uh, you know, with uh, an international move at this point, and that put a, a lot of stress into the company. Uh, so just, you know, uh, be mindful and careful about uh, your other co-founders, wh whether they agree or not. And of course, if you have legal paperwork in between, you know, uh, that, that will compromise uh, what is the decision at the end for them to, to become a part of a, of a program or to start an internationalization process. Um, this is important for us if you are ready to listen and you are ready to take uh, you know, the advice from the different mentors that we have in, in the community. Uh, companies that are uh, you know, expanding international, they need a lot of support from people that have already done it or people that already know very well uh, how to move into the ecosystem. And sometimes uh, you need to make some, uh, some changes uh, in, in how you are going to do your strategy. Sometimes you have something in mind, uh, but unfortunately, what, whatever you have in mind uh, may be not the best uh, strategy for uh, what is your business. So if you are ready to listen and you're ready to take advice, uh, you know, our experience with those that are listening is much better in a way that they can, they can uh, integrate their companies into the market much faster. And of course, uh, to have a good English level is required for all the co-founders, uh, especially if you are ready to sell or you have, uh, or you're putting together a marketing strategy, uh, English level will be required for sure. Now, your English doesn't have to be extremely good. Uh, I mean, you can see my English is not the best. Uh, I still have a kind of broken English, um, but it's it is something that, you know, that, that everyone has to go through <laughs> and, and have a good level of English, of course, is going to help you on all of this. So how we approve companies into this stage when companies are, um, uh, you know, are entering into a scale up bootcamp program. So the companies usually submit a form. Uh, right now, for example, we have uh, open applications uh, for, uh, for companies that are, are willing to be a part of the, of the scale up bootcamp program. And this application is uh, right now in GUST. Uh, so we basically review the application. We have a selection committee that is going to be, uh, you know, reviewing your application and evaluating your case. And if you have a good case uh, for what is a scale-up bootcamp program, then, uh, you know, we will ask you to come for a, um, for a call to clarify some questions and, and to learn more about your business and make sure this uh, step makes sense for your company. And then, you know, we go through uh, paperwork and payments and things like that. And then uh, we select the companies, uh, you know, and uh, a select volunteer that will be helping the startup into this step. Volunteers, by the way, are the core of our business. Uh, many of them are working with the companies in marketing and business development strategies, and they, um, they certainly uh, um, bring a lot of support into the ecosystem. Um, many of them are uh, university students or people that are changing careers into marketing uh, or sales aspects. So, so uh, you know, the people that we select are people that we believe is going to help the company in this stage that uh, they are bringing the company to Canada. So that's basically 
the uh, uh, the SCEDA bootcamp uh, program for the next year. Uh, we are thinking into how a hybrid uh, type of SCEDA bootcamp program that goes from March 15 to March 26, uh, uh, 2021. And uh, you know, you will have a commercial address here in Canada. We are currently located at the Ontario Center of Excellence. Uh, this is uh, basically, uh, you know, the government of Ontario that manage uh, part of uh, funding for startups and, and incubators and accelerators. And we are just one block from the CN Tower, which is an iconic uh, location in, in Toronto and a very beautiful big building that uh, we are right now. So. Uh, the startups that we have uh, at this point in the different programs, they are using uh, that address as a commercial address for their incorporation and, and also for their general business. Um, you will have, for example, daily mentoring sessions. Uh, bootcamp is, as it sounds, it's very intense and uh, companies uh, will come and they will have, uh, you know, uh, daily sessions with uh, experts in different areas. Now, for those that are not coming to the country because of COVID, uh, we have been doing these sessions online. So far, it has been amazing, uh, especially the last one we have done. Uh, it was uh, very well done in regards that companies were very well compromised with the program and they were uh, actually doing all the sessions that they require in order to uh, you know, advance in, in the market entry process. And then, of course, we have also daily meeting with the volunteers to advance in your plans and to do uh, as much as you can in order to understand your competitors and to understand your opportunities in the market, what will be your challenges in the market, identify those threats, uh, you know, and, and make sure that you will have a plan in, in order to, uh, you know, overcome those challenges when it comes and also uh, make sure that uh, we are putting together a plan that uh, will bring you a great opportunity for your company to enter in here. Uh, so we also recommend uh, weekly online and in-person events. And then, uh, you know, for, for people that are becoming a part of the program, uh, they will do a lot of um, uh, networking through these events. So believe it or not, before COVID-19, in Toronto, we used to have like uh, four to five, uh, you know, events per day in technology. This is that an, an average. Uh, right now that we are under COVID-19, we still have a lot of events happening online and there is a lot of opportunities to actually networking, uh, to do networking online. Now we are using Zoom, but uh, you know, for major events that we have, we are also using Hoping. Uh, this is a platform that helps, uh, you know, uh, people to connect in video conference call uh, randomly, basically the algorithm is helping to uh, match make uh, people and that helps a lot of in, in the networking and I've seen uh, you know many other events in the city they are using Hoping as well to, to do that or some similar platforms that have that specific al algorithm. So is it still possible to actually do networking and to meet people uh, that may be relevant for your business through those type of events. And uh, of course, uh, we request a number of connections in the Canadian market while uh, we are running the bootcamp uh, in, 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 uh, here in Toronto. So uh, we, we put a plan together uh, for companies to actually uh, you know, connect with other people. We have extended network in different areas. So we're happy to connect as well. That's why people use our services many times. Uh, they, they basically uh, do their best to, um, you know, to connect with the right people in their field. And we also, uh, you know, try uh, from our size uh, to connect you with different people uh, that can be relevant for, for your business. Now, I believe the next slide is about soft landing program. So I'm going to stop a little bit here and see the chat, uh, you know, if somebody has any questions at this point. Um, so. I have Mirta Rios asking about at uh, which TRL are we ready? Uh, can you let me know exactly what you mean with TRL? <laughs> Just to make sure that I'm understanding well. And I'm happy to see people from Calgary, from Argentina, from other places that, that are coming into this call. But if you have questions right now about the Scala Bootcamp program and the first validation program, 
please uh, go ahead and, and ask those questions. I'm more than happy to actually answer them. But okay, uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, while you are actually uh, putting, okay, I see, technology readiness level. Okay, yeah, so Mirta, basically, uh, you know, you have to be in a point that you can commercialize. Uh, you know, if, if your technology is not ready yet to, uh, to have a commercial process, then you are not ready for this, uh, this type of process. We have some exceptions um, that happens usually with the uh, um, uh, green tech, clean tech, and biotech companies. And they are not specific ready because those companies tend to have a, a, a bigger cycles, uh, you know, in regards of commercialization and all that. And we take care of those type of businesses. You know, we, we consider every single uh, case that we see in, in that aspect. But uh, just to be sure, you know, uh, you, you can submit an application and we will be happy to see it and, and see how ready you really are for, for a program like this one. Now, um, for um, not, our business based on financial services considered as well. Yes, if you have a technology financial business type, uh, it will be considered for sure. And uh, again, try to consider that we select companies that have intellectual property. Uh, so if you have intellectual property, you are in the financial sector, then we certainly will consider, uh, you know, to look at your case. Um, we receive, I have to say, uh, in between four and five inquiries per day about, uh, you know, how companies can enter into our programs. It's a lot of uh, emails that are happening. Many people ask us sometimes for calls. And we try to, um, you know, maximize our time by uh, putting together applications so we can actually review it before uh, we jump in a call and we can give you feedback before. Um, so just take in consideration that part. Uh, I have another question here. Hi, this is Danielle from Colombia. You mentioned that people is typically open to listen and give feedback to companies willing to enter to the Canadian market. How is this to speak? with B2B to validate uh, business value uh, proposition is actually easier, Daniel. I'm from Colombia as well. I have to tell you that uh, many times in our countries, it's very difficult to access to a uh, C-level type of executive or uh, people that can give feedback. It's not as hard as here. Uh, people are very used to, to jump in 15 minutes call or 30 minutes calls, depending, you know, uh, what, what would you like to propose? So sometimes just you know, sending an email or sending uh, information, sending a note in LinkedIn, uh, you know, helps a lot uh, to connect with other people, understand your, um, what is what you want to talk about. Um, this is something that we work also through the program because sometimes we reach out, you know, or startups reach out people, they don't get like people getting back to them. And uh, this is very common because sometimes you are, uh, you know, the words that you're using or maybe the approach that, that you selected was not the best. Uh, but we understand that. And because we, we have received too many international startups, we understand how the others have failed, for example, in communicate with potential customers. So we advise better in how to uh, get those 15 minutes call or 30 minutes calls. Uh, you know, with your potential customers, but certainly the, the ecosystem is more open in here. Uh, so, in, yeah, it's lot. Uh -huh. Hey, guy. Uh, man, how do you, uh, can one founder bring or represent two startups at the same time? <laughs> we don't recommend that. I, I have had cases in the past that uh, we have like a five uh, startups with five companies or three companies, and you know one company is more than enough to to actually uh, you know have a focus and try to make it work. Uh, like we personally, we don't take uh, you know uh, right now companies uh, that have startups with two or more uh, companies just because it's very difficult for them to focus on what they want to do. At least they have an extended team and they, they can actually, you know, put together sources around. Uh, but that's very unlikely. We haven't seen too many of those type of startups. 
And I have to say, you know, the startups that are, we are managing uh, are startups that are either uh, having in revenue to $150,000 up to $9 million in revenue. So we have startups in different stages. And even those with, you know, uh, uh, big revenues, they struggle, you know, sometimes with just one company. So just be mindful about that part. So I will continue here uh, for the landing program. And uh, I will take more questions after uh, this uh, part of the soft landing program. So uh, why soft landing program? So why people actually go and, uh, and try to get into a soft landing program? Um, basically because they have seen in the bootcamp program that they have a potential and they can put something in action. So they are validating assumptions. They, are, they have changing those assumptions and they, uh, they already realize what is the path for the company in this market. They, uh, they would like to get a new network in North America. Uh, it's, it's a good time for them to incorporate. Um, even under COVID-19, we have seen even more applications than any other year. Uh, I believe maybe, uh, um, you know, the, the, the stability of the ecosystem itself has helped and many companies to, uh, you know, uh, look at, at this market as a potential to, to go to in, uh, international markets. And certainly uh, for many technology companies, this is an amazing time, uh, even that it's a sad time for, uh, for, uh, for the world, uh, you know, facing a pandemic. But for many technology companies, uh, this is a good time for people to adopt digital solutions and to adopt uh, you know new ways to communicate and new ways to uh, network things like that you know for many technology businesses is actually incredibly time to incorporate uh, we also uh, send the companies to become a part of some other programs and uh, that means that you know we close we work very closely with other incubators and accelerators in the market uh, as for example mars discovery district uh, accelerator center uh, Ryerson, um, in, in general, you know, they have different uh, programs in Ryerson, including, including the DMC. And uh, we, we have Helix, in Tech Place, Kingston. We have many uh, of our partners that uh, we work together with them to recommend companies in there. And we have been lucky enough to, to have startups join those programs, which are extremely good programs. Uh, for some uh, of you that may not know, uh, for example, we have in Toronto the number one business incubator linked with university, which is DMC, have the number one accelerator uh, linked with university. I believe it's in between York University and Accelerator Center at this point. It's a, I haven't seen the last ranking, but we have the number one uh, in that. We have the largest um, Tech uh, Innovation Hub in the world in the square meters, which is Mars Discovery District. And we have also the largest uh, IoT center in the world in the square meters, which is uh, Catalysis 137. So we have a lot of uh, really incredible and talented innovation centers and incubators and accelerators. And uh, we are very grateful to work with them to recommend the startups uh, for those programs. It's no overlapping for us, so uh, really sometimes we have startups that they are joining four programs at the same time, which I don't personally recommend. But uh, you know, if you want to join several programs at the same time, we're okay with that. Uh, it's also making sense for many people because they are building a supporting network. They they go faster through different process and. Uh, people that we recommend we can actually uh, uh, put in put in you know a network for them that can help them to uh, understand better their possibilities and and go further to validate even even more um, so how companies do soft landing program and how they do this market entry program so we focus a lot in their strengths uh, it, it's, it's important for for us that uh, you know, they realize what are the challenges and what are the threats, uh, but certainly, uh, you know, having a local member in here uh, is important. So under COVID-19, we actually have put a plan in place and we are uh, hiring uh, volunteers, you know, we are paying them to be the local member for the startup. Uh, so when the startup cannot come here, the co-founders cannot come here, they still will have some a person in place here 
that we will be hiring uh, in order to help them uh, with the validation, with the connection with uh, clients, the marketing strategy, you know, with um, focus groups and things like that. Uh, strategies that we put in place uh, that, that can be possible just with people in here. Uh, so we also put a customized program uh, in soft landing. Basically, uh, we look at the uh, startup and we see, uh, we, we do a diagnosis of the company and we say, okay, uh, what you are going to need at this point is this, 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 and that in order to advance faster. So we put some mentors, uh, you know, customized per, uh, per, co per company. And um, of course, we are looking to run pilots if possible, uh, build focus groups and, uh, you know, provide um, marketing campaigns uh, and things that we can do uh, with the startups in order to uh, create more awareness and educate the, the potential customer that they are going to have in Canada. So what actions do we take during the soft landing program or market entry program? Uh, we put together milestones. Uh, it's, it's not like, you know, uh, we are going to do this in three months. It's like what we are going to do every week uh, or every two weeks in order to advance with the, uh, with the plans and make accountable uh, the startup into actually make that happen. Uh, of course, for this part, we have to be extremely realistic of what are the goals uh, for the company and what they actually can do in order to advance in the market. Uh, so if we have, uh, you know, the mentors working very close with the startups and they will uh, put in some call of action uh, for them, uh, you know, suggesting some activities or suggesting some network or suggesting some other things that they need to do in order to advance in, in their uh, market entry process. Uh, we follow very close results. We try our best to make sure that uh, you know the action that we are putting in place is actually coming with positive results uh, for the startups and uh, especially for pitching we practice like crazy because at the end uh, we would like the startup to be able to do a good sales pitch in the market uh, which is very different when you come from another country uh, the sales pitching here uh, can be a little bit more complicated than, than what you think uh, normally or what you have done normally so how do we approach companies in this stage? Uh, for uh, people that uh, you know, are coming after the bootcamp and they are in the market entry process, uh, we, again, we kind of have a, um, a diagnosis for the company with some recommendations. Uh, the volunteer also help us uh, with some feedback since the volunteer has been working with the company. Uh, we put some uh, realistic goals. Uh, we validate uh, assumptions in the bootcamp uh, we uh, expect that companies will be, uh, you know, finishing the business plan and have enough uh, budget uh, in the market to, to do uh, a market entry process. And uh, we have validated that, you know, what are the problems that they are going to have with the competitors and all team members are committed with the expansion of the, program, the, the company again. So for the soft landing program, uh, we usually start the soft landing immediately after uh, the, um, the bootcamp program. There is a period of adjust that uh, usually takes one or two weeks depending on the company because of paperwork, because they, they need to realize, you know, this, uh, basically the soft landing program is two months and a half. So uh, they need to adjust uh, to that new reality that they are going to be working uh, during those two months and a half. It's not as intense as the bootcamp program because we don't have like a sessions every single day as in the bootcamp, but certainly it requires some commitment per week and uh, companies have to adjust to that part. So uh, for the next year, the intention is to start in April 5th, uh, finishing in June 11th. So uh, again, the commercial address is going to be there at OCE. Uh, international teams are going to, um, be virtually, uh, you know, coming to the bootcamp if it's not possible for them to travel, but five people uh, from the team can be uh, available uh, to to be a part of the uh, of the soft landing program. Sorry, and then uh, you know, teams that are joined locally, we have a desk uh, dedicated for them, but it's a maximum two people that can uh, be at that desk. And of course, we have meeting rooms accessible and internet and 
I hear amazing coffee. Uh, I'm not a coffee person, so I don't know. <laughs> but uh, the startups that have been at the place, they said it's very good coffee. And of course, virtual or in uh, person meetings, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, with the mentors that we have. Now, before I start, start a visa program, I will take some questions in here if there is any question in this part. So, uh, can you share a success story and what the elements that may, made it successful? Yes, Roberto, uh, I will do that at the end because I have some cases at the end uh, that I would like to uh, highlight. I think we have, uh, I, I can speak here more than two hours about successful uh, cases and amazing stories uh, from, from startups that have been part of the program, but certainly I will highlight one at the end. Uh, okay, so this is the uh, uh, startup visa program, I think maybe another. Would you able to share the cost of, uh, to the applicant uh, has to bear for the whole process? Uh, yes, actually the cost of, uh, for every applicant is in our website. Uh, so the program has a cost, but I believe the cost is more, uh, you know, uh, about uh, operational costs that the people have to put together. It depends on the type of company they are bringing into the market. Uh, so, you know, the program, for example, the Scala Bootcamp program is $3,000. Uh, $3, the soft landing program is $1,500. And the Startup Visa program is $9,500. But that's, that's just the cost of the program per se. Uh, there is other costs associated with, you know, incorporation and things like that, that we, you know, you cover by yourself or travel and accommodation, things like that. Um, that at this point of the time under COVID, many companies are just, uh, you know, avoiding uh, because nobody has to uh, travel necessarily to, to become a part of the program. But you can review that in our website. You will see this information about programs. And then you go to each program. Uh, we have a brochure and we have a cost related in each program so you can review it. Now, uh, entering to start a visa program. And I'm close to finalize this uh, presentation. It has been already 40 minutes. Uh, so some common questions that we have first, because many people ask us about the start a visa program. So a startup visa program basically happens uh, when people have finished the soft landing program and then, uh, you know, they, they are eligible in our uh, structure to actually uh, enter into the startup visa program, but they require the approval from our board of directors, uh, which doesn't include me. I'm not going to be the one who approves you or not. I'm the CEO of the company. My team is working with you. I'm working with you very closely, so I'm biased. Uh, so uh, my board of directors, uh, you know, or Latin Startups board of directors will approve the companies or not, depending on the case that they are presenting. Usually in soft planning program, and even before uh, uh, actually in Excala Bootcamp program, we realize if the companies actually have a potential or not to enter in a startup visa program. Uh, so it's important that you have actually enough funding uh, to come into the startup visa program. So as per law uh, or what the government is suggesting is that you have uh, enough funding for 52 weeks. Now, I have to clarify that this is not what you need to live in Canada. This is what you need to operate in Canada. That means that you have to consider salaries, you know, operational costs, any other costs that you are are going to incur as a company in the 52 weeks. So I get people that tells us, you know, I have $20,000 or $50,000. That's really very low uh, for this market. Uh, Toronto is extremely expensive market. Canada is extremely expensive market. And you're required to have more. So you, you, you need to really take in consideration this. Because, uh, you know, if your company fails six months after you approve in the Startup Visa program because you were run uh, out of money, that will be our responsibility, not yours, because we, we're supposed to do the due diligence with you. And we, believe me, we take very seriously this step and we do the due diligence, uh, making sure that the company has enough funds to go through this process. We don't want any company to go broken because of this. Um, again, if you have intellectual property uh, in progress, uh, it's okay. 
Uh, we don't, we are not asking you right now to have, uh, you know, your papers with intellectual property. Many companies are filling out, uh, you know, uh, their intellectual uh, property uh, documents. And this is a process that sometimes for patents, for example, can take one to three years. So we understand that, but you have to act actually start the process when, when you are at to the point to present to start a visa program. Uh, after soft landing program, uh, do you have really good plan to expand for the next three years? Uh, like we are now asking you for a lot of things. First year, we know that uh, companies need to accommodate. They need to understand what they are facing, uh, and you know, and adjust their business models to uh, either Canada or the U.S. or any other market where they are expanding. Uh, but certainly, it's important that you have a clear picture of how you are going to grow in the next three years. And for that, we have actually mentors that can help in, in that point. And um, have you identified that all your co-founders or the ones that want to move actually will do it? You may have five co-founders and maybe two of them want to move, uh, or you think two of them want to move. Uh, so if there is anyone that will not move or will realize that, you know, their uh, significant other uh, person that they have in their life uh, may not want to move, it will affect the whole application. So when you submit the application, you submit the application all together uh, with family members, everything, it, you, I, we have to submit everything uh, together. Uh, so if somebody decides that, you know, in, in the process that this is not the right time and they don't want to move to Canada, then it, it, likely you are going to get a rejection for all the co-founders. So you have to really think about who are the co-founder or the co-founders that want to move to Canada in order to grow their business to a point uh, that, that you are expecting uh, as per the business plan or what we have worked. And uh, we get to ask many times, uh, when will be the supporting letter? Uh, when we give the supporting letter? Once the uh, board of directors are approving the application, Let's say, for example, this year we already are in soft landing program. This point, people in soft landing program are finishing in December 11th this year. Uh, so in December, and the week of December 14th, they will have the interviews with the board of directors. If the board of directors approve, then we are giving the letter in uh, early January, so they can start the legal process of, uh, you know, immigration work permit and all that. We don't want to give the letter at the end of the program because uh, you know many times the letter gets old and we have seen applications uh, in other incubators being rejected because the letter is old. And we don't want also the startup to be thinking about, you know, uh, what about their legal status in, in Canada or, or how they will grow this, uh, you know, having uh, the legal status in mind, just, uh, you know, worry about that part. So we take care of the paperwork at the initial part of the Stata Visa program. And then, uh, you know, we continue into the acceleration program, but we make sure that the startups get, uh, you know, the paperwork at least sent to the government so they don't have to have concerns uh, about paperwork at this point. This is the question that I don't want to see and anyone at the LATAM startups don't want to see. Why would you like to see Tell me what type of a startup would you want? What type of business uh, or financial uh, support you want to see? It's not what I want to see. This is not, you know, uh, what, what, what it makes sense for me. It's what it makes sense for you as a business. And if it makes you, sex, sense for you as a business, then we will take care, you know, of your, of your case. I will be advising you to go uh, for a startup visa program or go for any other program in the market. We are not an immigration officer. We don't take cases because of immigration. We take cases because of business. So it's very important that you understand that part. If we think that we can help your business and you can accelerate in the market, then we certainly will put 120% of ourselves as well, we are asking you to put that 120% of yourself for your business to be successful. But we are not like, you know, oh, you cannot immigrate, then we cannot, you know, do your pro uh, do work with your company. This is not the case. 
before we were approved as a designated company for the startup visa program, we were already working these programs with other startups and we always find out ways to bring them into the country if it makes sense for them. There is certainly many options, intercompany transfer, many, many options. We have immigration lawyers that can help with that, but we are not going to look at your case just because you want to reside in Canada. We look at your case because of your business. Uh, so what happens in the program is that for you to actually be a part of the program, we need you to be ready to commercialize. And, uh, you know, this is important because for this program, we are helping companies in to increase sales and funding. And if you're uh, not, re not ready for that part, we will be wasting a lot of time until you build ready. And then, you know, it's not going to be a good case for you. You, you have high chances uh, to actually, uh, you know, fail in the market because you are not ready. Uh, so this is one of the things. Uh, the other thing um, that you have to consider is that we are going to be working in a strong marketing campaigns and sales channels. Uh, so it's very important that, you know, if you are ready, then we will be putting that even stronger than soft landing program. Soft landing program, a lot of the marketing campaigns are testing, uh, you know, the market. And, but by the time we are in, in, a, in, in a startup visa program, we, may, we need to make sure that these marketing campaigns are actually working. So uh, we are also working to present to angel investors when companies are ready. We we'll start to look at the networks and to see, you know, uh, to put together presentations for angels. Uh, certainly work in alternative funding like grants and loans, I mentioned it before, is easier to go uh, and get uh, a grant in the market, or, you know, free money from the government on some loans in the market that are extremely low uh, interest. We ourselves, as an incubator, we have got into loans and has helped us a lot, you know, uh, and happily repay those loans, uh, but th there is something that, you know, money that you need to uh, uh, look after. And we are putting together as much as we can, uh, you know, network in that area. So uh, working with a strong uh, team is important. Uh, we look at companies that can hire local, local talent as well, that they want to improve technology and they may see you know, engineers or sales people or marketing people that can help actually the company uh, to become stronger in the market. Uh, again, we look for other business uh, programs in the market that can help you to even accelerate more through the networks. And we uh, strongly uh, um, support companies into going to competitions and work in PR because it's important for uh, these companies to do so. Um, so actually, right now we have uh, 14 companies in SUP program, which is the startup visa program. They come from different backgrounds. They come from India, China, uh, USA. Oh, sorry, China is not there yet. But we have a company right now in, in soft landing program in China, from China. But in the startup visa, we have from India and Brazil and USA and Colombia. So I know we call ourselves Latam startups, but we have become a lot of more international than that. Uh, so we are receiving companies from other amazing markets as well. Uh, so we're happy to have a very diverse and inclusive uh, community. And that's why, uh, you know, we are becoming more like a, a global type of uh, incubator and accelerator. Um, yeah, so basically the information that you see there is, is, is important. Most of the technologies that we work uh, are not related with creative industries because it's more difficult to actually, uh, you know, commercialize creative industries. Uh, it depends, you know, with creative industries, it has something to, to do with virtual reality, artificial intelligence. Uh, we may take uh, consideration in those cases. So. Uh, I'd like to uh, highlight some companies that have passed through the program. This is one of them. This guy is from Brazil. Uh, he was extremely happy after, uh, you know, he was selected to start a visa program. Yeah, he works in a very exclusive type of sector that is for uh, chartered flights, and he has an amazing platform for that. And he's growing amazingly uh, during COVID-19. Um, we have companies uh, in a startup visa program that they started a process um, back in 2018 or 2019, and they have seen, uh, you know, a lot of progress in what they have done in the market. Um, I have a company, for example, 
that they have been selected uh, last year um, for a, a bootcamp program and a soft landing program. This year, they got into a startup visa program and they already got two investments and they already got a grant in the market during COVID-19 you know, situation. Uh, so they are extremely happy uh, because of the network. Uh, you know, they have been able to advance extremely fast. Uh, we have seen other companies that they are starting to sell also faster in, into the market. Um, and some others that they, have, they haven't they have done as well as we expected because of COVID-19, but they are a pivoting business model and we are helping on that part. Um, so if you go to the website and you click on, on clients, you are going to see the different type of companies we have. And if you go to the blog, you actually will hear from some of them, some of their stories that we have. And this is something that I want to highlight at this point because, um, you know, after this uh, presentation, I will talk about the corporate program, but uh, we are going to have a next webinar in October 27 about lessons learned from other startups. And, and we are going to invite the startups in the soft landing program uh, to share their experiences and how they have done it in, into the market and how, how they actually have advanced. Uh, we try to be as um, transparent as possible because we want to help startups to understand what are the challenges as well. Not just to put a, a pretty picture of what, what is the ecosystem in here. There's a lot of challenges, guys, uh, that, that we have in the ecosystem, but with the right support, I believe that uh, companies can do better. Um, so the corporate program is one that I want to highlight at the end because this is some opportunities for startups that are, uh, are probably uh, way advanced in the market and they don't need to go through uh, a scale-up bootcamp and validation and, and things like that. Uh, because they, they already have it, uh, you know. So we um, we provide corporate program, which is a customized fr program from the beginning. Uh, we already have a company, sorry, in corporate program. We're supposed to launch the corporate program in March 2020. And of course, COVID was there, not helping us at all with this launching. Uh, but we are still were able to incorporate one company into the corporate program. And they work in mining in this corporation has 20,000 uh, employees around the world uh, all together with their stakeholders. And uh, they, they are actually, uh, you know, doing pretty much well under the cir circumstances right now in the corporate program. But we were able to facilitate for them staff in here, a uh, way to incorporate tax, uh, you know, uh, accountants and um, people around them, uh, helping them. Uh, to go faster than the structured program for, for a startup, uh, the startups. So it will depend of your situation. You may like to look at corporate program uh, instead of uh, the startup programs. But, uh, uh, you know, we certainly take a look of each of them and we will be recommending you uh, which one uh, will do better for you. So I know there are some questions in here. So I will start taking questions, uh, you know, after all this, um, so sorry. Uh, so Eric is, uh, um, you know, is there any program connections or mentoring in Latam Startups will offer for a startup launching here in Vancouver? Yes, uh, Eric, actually we have right now three startups that are part of our program. They have been doing the program here in Toronto, but because of our extended network in Vancouver, uh, we have been able to provide mentors in Vancouver. Uh, so this is something that, uh, you know, been doing uh, and we have a small community in Vancouver uh, that, uh, you know, startups that are a part of the program can reach out. So certainly that, that's, uh, that's possible. Uh, Slash uh, is asking how much runaway we need uh, to have to run a startup successfully before getting external funding. Uh, that's a very difficult question because that will depend of, uh, you know, the startup. And that will depend of, uh, you know, the type of business that you're uh, bringing here and how fast you want to put, you know, things to work uh, in progress. And some startups that have very little um, funding um, may take a while for them to, to actually get into sales and commercialization and eventually uh, to get into investors. Uh, what I can say for sure is that 
if you don't have traction in the market, it's going to be extremely difficult to get investors uh, uh, for, for you. So just uh, know that part. Um, uh, I have another question. Do, you need, do we need to run uh, our business outside of Canada before submitting uh, for a startup visa program? Not necessarily. Uh, we actually have some cases when, uh, you know, it, it, perhaps the co-founders come from international backgrounds and they are building something new in here. Uh, we have taken consideration those cases. It depends also of the background of the person and it depends of, uh, you know, um, what, they, what they are intending to do in here. Uh, sometimes we have very difficult cases when, for example, the co-founder doesn't have uh, expertise in the area or doesn't have anyone with expertise in that area. And, uh, it, you know, they, they want to put something in here without having expertise or any knowledge of how to do business before. Uh, is, that's a very difficult case. Uh, I will put like silly example right now. Uh, if somebody, for example, uh, if I want to put a restaurant, I will tell you what, I will fail right away because I'm the worst person cooking for anyone. Somebody can get poisoned with my cooking. So this is one, one fact. So if, uh, if I, I wouldn't be the right person to put, you know, a restaurant. So same thing we try to say to, um, uh, to the startups, you know, uh, if, if you want to put a, a um, a business please make sure that you know what you are doing uh, no not just uh, you know you, you can get advisors around you that can help you we we try to do that as well but we try to do that in a way that we can complement businesses no that we have to do everything from scratch so sorry for the long answer um, so Simara nice to see you thank you for coming to the webinar so uh, you can provide some statistics. Could you please tell us where the majority of uh, international startups have joined the program come from? Uh, do you have any opinion over the right successful vein accepting to the program? And have those entrepreneurs received any support uh, from the government? Um, okay, so those are several questions, Yomar. <laughs> so first, uh, you know, in terms of jurisdiction, uh, still we have a lot of startups from Brazil and uh, ultimately from Mexico as well, but we have seen some diversification in the last uh, cohorts. So again, we have seen more applications from India, Pakistan, China, Iran, like, you know, from several other countries. So those statistics may change in the future, but at this point, I will say, uh, close to half of the community come from Brazil and some some others, uh, you know, the next biggest uh, uh, community is from Mexico. Uh, so yeah, that, that's how, how it is at this point. Um, now, in, in terms of uh, any opinion that we have in, in, in startups being successful at the, uh, accepting into the program, again, we see that if startups have the right traction uh, you know, in their countries or they are proposing something that it makes totally sense to put in here, uh, we will take a consideration of that. Important for us is that financial uh, stability is in there. So we, again, we don't want anyone, anyone to go broken because of the program. Uh, so, you know, it's, we, we couldn't have good business charging everyone and accepting everyone to the program, but this is not the case for us. We, we really want to help and we are not helping if we are accepting companies that are not well financially established. Uh, so uh, have those entrepreneurs have received support from governments? Yeah, actually we have a good case uh, just lately with Chile. Uh, Pro Chile uh, was able to support uh, three startups in the last cohort and they were, uh, you know, um, basically paying the program for them. That helped a lot, those the startups and to become a part of the program and to uh, see a realistic opportunities for them in the market. And they may continue the program for the next year, uh, you know, soft landing program. This kind of came out of the blue, that, that type of support at this point was kind of close to, to the dates when we have to deliver the program. But uh, we were able to help them and uh, uh, I was very uh, proud to see Pro Chile helping those companies. Uh, they really did a, a good job with those companies and selecting the right companies for the program. 
So I think so far that's, uh, that's the presentation, guys. It's already over one hour. Uh, so I hope this presentation helps to understand better what companies have to do in order to expand business into Canada. Uh, this is not an easy task. Again, I don't want to uh, put together a pretty picture of uh, what people uh, are doing in regards of the program. Uh, but please, uh, you know, reach out if you feel like you, you need, uh, you know, more information uh, or you need some support. Uh, we are also happy to recommend uh, startups to other programs that are in the market. Uh, this webinar is going to be posted in our YouTube channel. So if you need to review any of this information that we are passing right now, then uh, we are more than happy to uh, pass that information to uh, everyone. Um, so Gabby is putting there the link for the next uh, uh, webinar that it will be more interactive the next one, uh, having some other uh, startups join the webinar. Uh, so they will be uh, basically sharing their experience and how they are doing actually uh, their expansion process in Canada. So thank you so much for uh, joining us today. And uh, we certainly are going to be um, in contact with all of you through our newsletter. Thank you.